We've been hearing the very unusual story of, of the sage Vita Havya. Even though he was liberated, he still went on and lived various incarnations. And he lived for several world cycles as the god Indra. And he was an attendant of Lord Shiva for a whole epoch. And this all happened during his liberation while his body was still sitting in quiescence in Samadhi. And eventually, after 300 years, his body is revived. Rama asked, Lord, please tell me how Vitahavya revived his body in the cave. Vasishta continued, The sage had realized the infinite consciousness and he knew that the mind called Vitahavya was but a trick of the infinite consciousness. The mind of Vitahavya was a bundle of notions which the infinite consciousness gets involved in. While he was a servant of Lord Shiva, he once thought of seeing that body of Vita Havya. When he thought thus, in his own consciousness, he saw all the other embodiments that he had had. Some of them had come to an end, and others were still functioning. And he saw the body known as Vita Havya sunk like a worm in mud. So that's an interesting one, isn't it? Some of his incarnations were still operating, they hadn't come to an end. So it's not as if you have one incarnation after another, you can have several going on at the same time. Seeing it thus, he reflected, Surely this body of mine is devoid of life force, and is therefore unable to function. I shall now enter the solar orbit, and with the help of the solar power known as Pingala, I shall enter that body. So this is Pranayama stuff here. Pingala is one of the major psychic nerves, it's the active male solar nerve. On the other hand, this body is neither worth reviving nor worth abandoning. It is the same to me whether the body is abandoned or it is revived. Seeing that this body has not decomposed and returned to the elements, I shall enter into it and function for a while. The sage's subtle body then entered into the orbit of the sun. So this subtle body gets specifically mentioned here. And uh, I said previously that what's happening is, is clearly happening in the sage's subtle body and not in the ordinary physical reality. Reflecting on the purpose of the sage's entry into his orbit and the appropriate action concerning that purpose, the sun ordained his own energy to execute the task. The subtle body of the sage thereupon saluted the sun. The energy of the sun led the way and, as ordained by the sun, it entered the region of the Vindhya after descending from the solar orbit. The Vindhya is that region where Vita Havya's body was physically located. It descended right where the body of the sage was lying covered in mud in order to raise it. Following it, the subtle body of Vita Havya also entered that body. That body was instantly revived. Vita Havya thereupon bowed to the solar energy, Pingala, who returned the salutation. Pingala returned to the solar orbit, and the sage proceeded towards the lake for his bath and ablution. Having had his bath and having worshipped the sun, the sage resumed his life as before. He lived an enlightened life with friendliness, balanced mind, peace, compassion and joy. So that's quite a fascinating account of Vita Havya's return to his body. But whatever it was, he entered into some very vivid experiences and has now come back to his physical body. The sister continued. In the evening, the sage once again entered the forest with which he was familiar for the practice of intense meditation. He thought, I have already realized the falsity of the senses. Any further inquiry concerning them will be a contradiction. Having abandoned all vain imagination, this is and this is not, he sat in the lotus posture again, and in him arose the knowledge, I am established in the consciousness of total equanimity. 
awake, I remain as if in sleep. Established in the transcendental state of consciousness, I shall continue to be till the body drops away. Thus resolved, he meditated for six days, which passed as if in a moment. After that, he lived a long time as a liberated sage. He was free from exaltation and sorrow. It seems to me that the sage is now practicing self-inquiry. He's gone beyond notions of existence, this is, or non-existence, this is not. He's in a state of total equanimity. And we're told that he will stay in this transcendental state till the body drops away. He sounds like he's going into meditation, never to come back. But he meditated for six days and then he lived for a long time as a liberated sage. So what happened then was he was no longer caught up in notions of the body. He was free from exaltation and sorrow. At times he would address his mind thus, O oh mind, look how blissful you are now that you are in a balanced state. Remain like that all the time. He would address his senses as follows, O oh senses, the self does not belong to you, nor do you belong to the self. May you all perish, your cravings have ceased. You will no longer be able to rule me. The error of your existence arose from ignorance of the self even as the non-perception of the rope gives rise to the erroneous perception of a snake. All these errors exist in the darkness of non-wisdom and in the light of wisdom they vanish. Vita Havya began his contemplation in contemplating the senses and their nature. The senses are what keep us, what keep the attention away from itself. They're what divert the attention most of the time although we also have our thoughts and feelings and moods, these also divert our attention. But once we realise the notional nature of the senses, we become dispassionate with regard to the contents of the senses and we no longer need to worry about them. <laughs>